Hi, I hope you're doing well wherever you're watching me from. Um, so just really quickly to start with, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Abby and I lived in York from 2014 to 2017 as a student and I was part of St Thomas's during that time. And then after I graduated, I moved to South Asia for two years where I worked for an organisation called International Justice Mission, which works to stop human trafficking and slavery and other forms of violence around the world. And particularly where I was working, we were looking at issues of forced labour. So um, where people are not being paid for their work or um, are suffering other human rights uh, violations and maybe can't leave for whatever reason. And then in September, I came back to the UK and I carried on working for IJM in the UK. But also I've been studying a master's where I've been looking at issues of poverty and conflict and how to resolve some of these things. So, yeah. And then quickly before I start kind of delving into the content, I just quickly say a disclaimer that um, I don't have that long to talk about some of these issues and they're quite complex and different people have different opinions on them. And so basically 100% feel free to disagree with anything that I say and um, also feel free to talk about some of these things further with your groups and ask Al if you need any resources or if you want to have a deeper discussion about anything, because I feel like this like even one of these topics could be a whole sermon series so there's a lot of stuff to talk about so the first question that louise and caleb asked me to say something about is how can a god who cares for us all let some people struggle um so i feel like that's a really hard question and there's a lot of complex theology to do with free will and suffering and um uh, sin and all sorts of things and different people have different opinions but I just thought I'd say a few things that I do know to be true um, so firstly that God is definitely a God of justice I think we can see that all throughout the Bible that God constantly is looking out for the people who are being oppressed and um, even the whole I feel like the whole story of the Bible is Jesus bringing people out of um, out of slavery to whatever into freedom and probably all of you have seen that in your own lives as well how you've been transformed and how some of the things that were kind of like keeping you enslaved um god is transforming some of those things um secondly i'd say that the bible tells us that there will be justice in the end so even though some of these things seem really overwhelming and complicated and scary actually like god will achieve justice in the end and and I feel like that's a real comfort to know and that might not necessarily be in our lifetimes but the bible tells us that 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 is already set and that's a definite thing um then thirdly I'd say that like the bible is pretty topsy-turvy so I remember when I kind of first encountered God personally I decided to read the bible the whole way through and I was really shocked at Jesus's character because I think I'd always thought of Jesus as someone who would tell you what rules you needed to obey and I was really shocked that he was this radical guy who cared so much about the people that no one else cared about and I feel like if that is the character of our God then like that's that's absolutely incredible and kind of leads on to my final point which is that God invites us into his plans for justice so he invites us to be sacrificial and to model him and to care about people that no one else cares about and so like that's really exciting and challenging um yeah so now on to the second question which is what why do some people seem to not care about equality um so I suppose we never actually know 100% what's going on in someone else's heart but I do think a lot of us a lot of us can be guilty of not caring about other people and not caring about inequalities that are, um, that are happening in the world. Um, and I think, in my opinion, there's one major reason why. I think it's easy sometimes for us to point at people who seem very bad or seem very evil and think like they're the problem. But I think actually there's more of a common thing which impacts all of us, which is I think it's easy not to care about inequality when you don't have a close proximity to people who are different from you and maybe 
um, experiencing the world differently from you. So whether that's someone of a different race, of a different economic background, someone who has a disability, someone from another country, um, someone from another religion, I feel like if you don't, if you don't um, engage with people who are different from you, it's very easy to switch off from issues which might affect them. Um, and so an example of that for from my life is a lot of the places that I've lived, including York and Brighton, and um, which is where I live now, and South Asia, I feel like there's um, people who are homeless and who live on the streets and um, people who will ask for money. And I've found for myself, I've been guilty in the past of just walking past and um, ignoring someone who asks for help or who asks for money um, and just blanking them and pretending that they're not there because I think it's easier for us to do that and to numb ourselves than to have to engage with the fact that the situation isn't right because that's quite a painful thing to do um, for us to have to engage with the fact that we have a certain privilege or the world isn't as it seems and so I think it's easier to not um, engage and then I think that's one of the things that really speaks to me in the Bible is the fact that Jesus wasn't like that at all. So he um, ate with ate with people that um, were counted as being like the worst sinners, like the tax collectors and prostitutes. And, and so I feel like that's really convicting for us. And I feel like in, in the world at the moment, there's a real tendency for people to just stick to making friends with people who are exactly like them and kind of stick in bubbles of political opinion or wealth brackets or um, whatever, because it, it makes us feel comfortable to be around people who are like us. But I feel like um, if we want to address some of these inequalities, then we need to not be like that. I feel like if people who are really rich were really friends with people who are really poor, then poverty wouldn't exist anymore because you couldn't, I feel like if you if you truly saw someone how God sees them and you were um, you had more than they did, I feel like you would share with them. And so I think that kind of is a wider problem as well. Um, I think it's easier for us not to care, but I think God calls us to more than that. And then the surprising thing is maybe at first that might seem like a sacrifice to have to engage with issues and have to confront your own comfort. But then I think actually that's a really rewarding thing to do and you actually gain a lot more than you would have done before. So finally, does being Christian change how I should view this and what can I do to help? So I feel like I already touched on this a little bit um, previously, but I kind of thought of a few more practical things to say about this. Um, so firstly, and really importantly, I think it's really easy to feel very overwhelmed by all the suffering that's going on in the world and um, all the different inequalities and all the problems. And so I think firstly, it's important to know that this is about God and it's not about any of us. And it's it's impossible for any of us to be someone's saviour or, or the world's saviour, Jesus is. And um, it's important to know that God will make justice happen. And so it's it's more just that God invites you into that. It's it's not that it's about you having to strive to change things. Um, so I think that's a really important reminder. And then secondly, I'd say that prayer is really important. Um, I think sometimes we just say prayer because we feel like we should um, quickly at the end of I don't know at the end of a church meeting we, we quickly say a prayer but I feel like either it makes a big difference or it doesn't so we need to either take it seriously or not bother at all um, and I feel like like from my work with IJM I've seen the power of prayer sometimes when things seemed really impossible and I had people back in the UK praying for me and and things would really shift and people's lives would be transformed and so I feel like that's a really really key thing um, and I feel like prayer changes us as well, because if you're praying for someone and you're asking God to see them how he does, then you can't help but be changed by that, particularly like you would just be filled with love and compassion because that that's what God is. Um, then thirdly, I say I'd say it's really important to be people who listen. I feel like um, in our world at the moment, we all like to have opinions and that's really valued and sometimes you can have conversations with people and you kind of have like a set view in your mind of 
of already what you think and you're just waiting for an opportunity to speak and to share your opinion and not really listening to the other person and I feel like with some of these issues of inequality unless you listen to people who are actually being affected by them and people who are different from you you'll never really understand them so like for me I'll never truly understand what it's like to not be white and so if I'm gonna hope to understand racial inequality at all I need to start by listening to people who are experiencing that and maybe that's making friends with people and talking to them or maybe that's um, informing yourself through reading books or um, I don't know just or even asking God how he views some of these issues but I think listening is really really key. Then fourthly I'd say that it's important to know that the church is a body for a reason um, just me on my own or you on your own you can't you can't do something about all of these different issues and all the problems in the world and so it's important that we're a body and different people care about different things some people are called to live in York and some people are called to live abroad and and bring justice in different ways and so I think it's important to think about like in your situation what is something that you could do um, so maybe that's in your workplace giving opportunities to people who wouldn't usually get it or um, speaking up for people who uh, maybe suffer discrimination or including people or when people come to church who are, who are um, new, talking to them and including them. Um, so I suppose that, that really varies dependent on your particular situation. And then uh, as well about that, I think we're a body because we're supposed to support each other. So sometimes you can feel really drained from caring about some of these issues. And I feel like it's important to have people at church who are going to lift each other up. And, and if you need to rest and someone else do something, then kind of like tag team like that. I think that's really important. And then like finally, fifth, I'd say it's really important to keep in mind that the joy of the Lord is your strength. I think sometimes some of these issues are really dark. I found working with IJM, like I've come across some really horrible things and and like thinking about some of those issues all the time can make you feel really down and um, it can really get to you after a while but they have a great culture of laughing about things and having joy and supporting one another and I, I feel like that's so important and that can only come from God you can't make yourself feel more joyful and so I think like all of these issues together um, it's really important to spend time with God and uh, worship and pray and um, spend time with um, your community as well so that's kind of all from me again feel free to disagree with anything I've said and yeah I hope you have good discussions